<laughs> That's a waterfall forecast. What kind of a bicycle is this, Ethan? Yes, you are watching a middle-aged man bobbing his head up and down to K-pop music. That is how you know how much Korean culture have infiltrated the rest of the world these days. It's no wonder that we had this urge to make a trip to Korea this year, specifically the beautiful Jeju Island. Now, there's plenty of videos already talking about Jeju Island, and if you have this one thing we learned going to Jeju Island this year, there is a huge range of activities to do here. I'll be putting more emphasis on things that's suitable for families, especially ones with kids. By the end of the video, I hope I can help you with common questions for first timers to Jeju Island, like the best way to get around, how long to stay here, where should I stay, what food should I try, which attraction should I go to see, things to watch out for, and so on. Let's start with a little bit of geography. Jeju Island is about 73 kilometers east-west, 31 kilometers north-south. It is about two and a half times bigger than Singapore, which has a population of close to five and a half million. On Jeju Island, only 670,000. So it's actually quite a lot of land with relatively small population. The island is dominated by Halasan Mountain in the middle. And don't worry, the last time it erupted was more than a thousand years ago. To the north is the city of Jeju. It's where the international airport is and your most likely entry into Jeju Island. To the south is the second major city of Jeju Island called Sewipo. This will be more important later when we discuss where to stay. So. How many days should you spend here? Most itineraries you find on the internet will suggest between 3 to 5 days. The range of suggested things to do and places to go by these itineraries will vary a lot. From itineraries that are focused on nature like waterfalls, hiking or climbing a few mountains, others focused on food like black pork or fresh seafood. Some are more interested in flowers, tangerine farms, and some may be focused on theme parks, aquariums, beaches. My point? The attractions available on this island is actually quite spread out throughout the entire island. How many days you decide to spend here will be influenced by what are you primarily interested to see and do, and what sort of pace you want your holiday. As an indication, three days will allow you to see a few main attractions at a pretty rushed pace. Five days will allow you to see a bit more, slightly more relaxed. Seven days is probably a good compromise to cover 
quite a lot more of the island with some time left for random discoveries or just time to chill and relax. Personally, I think you can easily spend 12 days here and still feel like you haven't seen everything yet. Let's get one thing out of the way. There is no metro or public trains on Jeju Island. They have buses, but I think to get the most out of your stay here, you really should consider renting a car, especially for families with kids. Yes, you can do it cool by renting a Harley. And if I'm here to travel solo or decide to elope with a mistress one day, I will probably do exactly that. For now, there is no doubt that a rented car is the best way to get around. With a car, it's fantastic to be able to just rock up to places to enjoy a cafe you found randomly, or pop by a convenience store when you feel like having a snack, and even discover places accidentally that wasn't even on your itinerary in the first place. And look, there are downsides driving around Jeju Island. The one frustration I have is the relatively low speed limit and seemingly large number of school zones. There's plenty of traffic cameras to catch you if you don't follow the rules too. Driving anywhere on this island is gonna take longer than you are used to. The only car rental company I would trust is Lotte Car Rental, located near the international airport. They seem to be the largest and the prices seem reasonable. They can speak English as well, but the one downside is that getting to the car rental place involves a short shuttle bus. As I indicated earlier, there really is many ways you can tackle Jeju Island. If you only have a few days, it makes sense to stay in one area close to your places of interest. If you have 12 days like I did, and you want to see a range of things, I would suggest splitting up your stay into different areas. Something like this. Three days around West Jeju Island to cover lots of theme parks, lots of museums, and the famous tea farm. Three days around Seowipo to cover waterfalls, carbonated hot spring, submarine, and outdoor hiking. Three days around East Jeju Island to cover aquarium, beaches, lava tube cave, Udo Island, and just admiring wind farms in the area. Lastly, Three days in downtown Jeju city, just to watch the famous Nanta show, lots of shopping, Dongmun Market, and check out Grand Hyatt, and I'll tell you why later. You will get a very different flavor of Jeju Island in each area, guaranteed. Now in terms of which accommodation to stay, I suggest you do your own research to find the ones you prefer. But here are the ones I stayed, from the least expensive to the most expensive. Jeju Aerospace Hotel Located right in the middle of West Jeju This is easily the cheapest hotel we stayed at It's pretty basic, but we loved it as the room is actually quite big What's most wonderful about it is that it overlooks the famous Ocelot Tea Farm So plenty of photo opportunities for the Instagrammers in your family It's also close to the Aerospace Museum Which I assure you is super fun for the kids Jeju Bricks This one is located very close to Seowipo City and it's very close to the Southern Coastal Walking Trails It's basically great for hiking and sightseeing The room we had came with sea view and a very large bathtub What we love about it is the fact that the laundry service is free Yes, free Hand them your dirty clothes and it comes back the next day, all folded and clean. I'm speechless. Jeju Baram Kozi. This one easily looks the coolest on the outside as well as on the inside. It is an Airbnb style accommodation, so it doesn't come with hotel services like bed makeup. The interior is very pretty, however, and is located right on the coastal area famous for wind farms and beautiful beaches. So again, perfect for Instagrammers in your household. 
It is the perfect base to explore attractions on East Jeju. Grand Hyatt. Now this building is easily the tallest in Jeju city and it is itself an attraction. The view from our room is of course amazing, towering over all other buildings in Jeju city. Our room is huge at at least 65 meters squared. It's the smallest one they have, believe it or not. Grand Hyatt is nothing like anything else in Jeju or Korea for that matter. It is actually the perfect place to wind down from your holiday and it's perhaps to do some last minute shopping or pretend that you've already left Jeju. There is a casino too for you to donate any remaining cash you have from your holiday. Prices are out of this world. For example, expect to pay 82,000 won for Bingsu. In case you don't know what Bingsu is, it's a bowl of ice shavings with mango in it. Yeah, I think you can probably guess how much everything else is based on that. I'm no food connoisseur, but I've definitely heard of tourists coming here just to sample the wide variety of Jeju specialties. So what I'm sharing next is just what I think you should try. Black pork. This one is advertised a lot as a must try dish. Maybe I don't have the pele of a native Korean, because I personally can't tell the difference between the plain pork versus Jeju black pork. Most restaurants serving these do have a minimum order based on the number of guests. So it can get expensive. It has all the signs of a tourist trap, but you have to try it once at least. Champagne noodles. I'm not regularly a fan of seafood noodles, which is basically what this is. But if you happen to be on Udo Island, then yeah, I would say make an effort to try this out. It's rare to see more seafood than noodles in a dish. And I would say the prices are quite reasonable too. Something with halabong in it. This formula of adding halabong or jeju tangerine to your favorite food seems to be everywhere. One of my unexpected favorite is halabong pizza. There's plenty of others like halabong ice cream and halabong drinks is worth trying. Try something that's still moving when served. Yes, I'm talking about raw seafood. If you don't regularly consume live creatures, it will be a bit unnerving. We tried some live abalone and so-called penis worm and survived them both. It may seem disgusting at first, but I assure you they taste better than they look. If you're not into raw seafood, there's plenty of options for cooked seafood too, like octopus on pasta, or cooked abalone instead. So, to summarize food on Jeju Island in general, they're good. Now here's a fact that's true for me, and I don't know if it would be true for you. I can proudly say that throughout my entire food journey on Jeju, I did not experience a single episode of bad farts or diarrhea. I hope someone will someday prove this scientifically, but for now, it's a testament to the quality of the food and the ingredients from Jeju. As I've mentioned before, there are a ton of attractions available to you on Jeju Island. Whilst there are sites and activities that you probably should see and do, I took the approach of simply winging it when I got there. Some days, I simply walked into a tourist information center or even just your hotel lobby to check out the huge number of flyers on their stand to see what we can see and do for the day. What's interesting for you will likely be very different from mine. But the good thing about Jeju Island is that there is something for everyone. I won't get into too many specifics and I suggest watching the epic intro at the start of this video again if you need some more inspiration or places to visit. To give you an idea, here's just a few I would suggest. 1. Museums 
there is definitely a museum for you. Like classic cars and pianos, there's automobile and piano museum. You like figurines? There's the Jeju Figurine Museum, featuring pretty substantial collections of Marvel and Star Wars figurines. You like aeroplanes? There's Aerospace Museum that I mentioned earlier. From memory, there's a museum for liquors, art, teddy bear, glass, etc. The list goes on. Waterfalls There's quite a number of waterfalls littered all over the southern part of Jeju Island, but if you have limited time, I would suggest checking out Jombang Waterfall, which is probably the biggest, tallest waterfall. It's not free, however, but definitely worth going for a photo. Udo Island This is a tiny island off northeast Jeju Island. It might seem a little weird going to an island as you're already on an island, but it's great for those who appreciate a bit of nature. Not so great if you don't like walking much. It's famous for some unique food as well, like Udo peanut ice cream. And as I mentioned earlier, their so-called champang noodle is definitely worth trying as well. You only need a day here, and as of 2023, you can bring your rented car over by ferry. So it's a no-brainer for families. But if you don't like the hassle, you can definitely rent their rather touristy bikes as well. It's small enough to cycle around the entire island if you want to. Bakeries, cafes. There are a ton of boutique bakeries and cafes here. I must admit, they come across a little bit touristy and overpriced. Having said that, some of the cafes we've been to are more than just cafes. Like Mipuen Bakery features a giant swing. Antoinette Cafe features beautiful view of the coast. Or this cafe that has a tangerine farm as its backyard. Heinyo or women divers. Jeju is famous for these senior ladies who collect seafood for a living. You gotta have respect for them, especially knowing that some are now in their 80s, diving up to 30 meters deep just by holding their breath for over three minutes. You can catch them at the aquarium, and another place that you could potentially catch them is somewhere around the coast. We caught them by chance when we visited Yongduan Rock, and it's pretty amazing just watching them going by their business. Nanta Show. It's a Korean classic that has been around since the late 90s. There's a reason why they're still around after this long. And I would say most families will enjoy their comedy. If you want to go, I suggest to get good seats near the front of the stage. For the kind of quality you're getting, I think it's actually not that expensive. Again, these are just what we enjoyed, but everyone will have their preferences. I highly suggest putting together your own itineraries around your own interest. As famous as Jeju Island is, I couldn't help but feel that it is still an island catered mostly for the locals. You will come across restaurants or attractions with menus or signs entirely in Korean not a problem most of the time and if you do not know a word of Korean like me I would suggest downloading Google Lens on your phone it worked really well for me and I'm probably the most useful app we could use to get menus and signs translated Jeju Island for me is definitely one that deserves a second trip now if you don't mind me I have more K-pop songs and K-dramas to catch up on have a great holiday to Jeju Island if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Have a nice day.